Today we're going to look at section 3.2, which is on solving linear systems algebraically. Now yesterday we talked about solving systems of equations by graphing. Today we're going to talk about two methods of solving systems of equations, and I personally like these much better than the graphing, and these two methods are called substitution and elimination. Now the first method is substitution, and here are the steps. First, you're going to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So you're going to get one of the variables in one of the equations by itself. Then you're going to substitute that expression from one into the other equation and solve for the other variable. And then you're going to substitute that value back into step two into the revised equation from step one and solve. So here's how we're going to do it. Step one, I'm going to solve one of these variables. Well, if we look here, this second equation has a y that's by itself. It has a leading coefficient of 1. So that's the easiest one to solve for. So if we do that, we're going to solve that equation. We're going to get y equals 2x plus 4. And that's really what step 1 says. Solve one of the equations for one of the variables. It doesn't matter if we solve for x. It doesn't matter if we solve for y. But in this case, I'm going to do this because if that leading coefficient is 1, then when, I did, when we do the substitution, we're not going to get any fractions which is going to make that much easier for us to solve. All right, step two says we're going to substitute this equation into the other one. So I know that y equals this. So I'm going to put that in for y. So we're just going to rewrite this, the other equation, 3x plus 2y. Well, instead of y, we write 2x plus 4 because that's what y equals, and then that is 1. And now we solve this. We have 3x, use the distributive property, you get 4x plus 8 equals 1. So 3x plus 4x is 7x. That's going to equal negative 7 if we subtract the 8 over there. And so we get x equals 1. Or, sorry, negative 1. So that's step 2. We substituted that value in and solved it. All right, step 3 now is we just take this and plug it into the one we already solved for. So step 3 is going to say we're going to have y equals 2 times x is negative 1 plus 4. So it's negative 2 plus 4, which is 2. So we have a y value and an x value. Remember, our solution is always an ordered pair. So the solution to this system of equations is negative 1, 2. And again, we can plug those in to see if they work. If we put it into the top equation, we get negative 3 plus 4, which is 1. 1 equals 1. That one works. If you put it into the bottom equation, we get 2 plus 2, which is 4. 4 equals 4. That one works. So there is your solution. It's the ordered pair negative 1, 2. The second method is called the elimination method. And this is where we multiply one or both of the equations by a constant to obtain coefficients that differ only in sign for one of the variables. Then we're going to add the two together. Combining like terms will eliminate one of the variables. Then you solve for the remaining variable. Then step three says we substitute that back in. Plug it back in, find the other one. So if we look at Example two, we're going to use elimination. We want to eliminate the variable. So our goal is to get either the x's or the y's to be numbers that are opposites. So I want like 5 and negative 5 or 2 and negative 2 because when I add those up, we're going to get 0 and those variables will disappear. So what we're going to do is this. I see right here that my x's. I can get those to be opposites very easily. 
I just have to multiply the bottom equation by 4. Because then I have 8x in the first one and negative 8x in the second one. So step 1 says that's what we're going to do. We're going to go 8x plus 2y equals 4. I'm just going to rewrite that one. And this one, I'm going to multiply everything here by negative 4. Oops, sorry, by just positive 4. Because it's already negative. So we're going to get negative 8x plus 12y equals 52. Now we add them up. So we're going to get 56 equals 14y. And notice, my x's disappear. If you're using elimination, one of your variables must disappear. Otherwise, you didn't do it correctly. So now we solve this. We take 56 divided by 14, and we get y is 4. All right, so we know that that's our y value. So really, that was step 1 and 2 together. We just did step 1 and 2. So now step 3 says we're going to substitute this back in to one of the original problems. Well, if we look at this, you can do it to either equation. But So let's just take the top one. So I'm going to say 8x plus 2. We solve for y. We know that y is now 4, so that's what I'm going to put in there, equals 4. And you solve it. 8x plus 8 equals 4. So 8x equals negative 4, and x equals negative 1 half. So then we have to write our ordered pair. It's negative 1 half, 4. So here is my solution. And then you plug this back in to check if it works. Well, let's do it quick. 8 times negative a half, we're going to do the top one, is negative 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 4, or negative 4 plus 8 is 4. That one works. Plug it into the bottom equation. That's going to give us 1 plus 12, which is 13. So that one works. So there is our solution. Now, when you take the quiz, I'm going to ask you to do a problem using elimination, and I'm going to ask you to do a problem using substitution. But once you get to the test, you can use whatever method you want. If you want to graph every single one, you can graph every one. If you want to use substitution all the time, you can use substitution all the time. Elimination all the time, you can use elimination all the time. The key is going to be, however, to figure out which one is going to work the easiest for, for these. So now like this problem, we might not want to use substitution because we don't have any lead coefficients of 1. So we're going to jump over to some guided practice questions. So here are three guided practice questions. Uh, you can use either method. Um, if you look at question number one, I'm going to use substitution on that one, and I'll use elimination on the other two. Um, so you go ahead and pause the video. And you can hit play when you're ready to move on. So there are the answers for the guided practice questions 1, 2, and 3. Now notice in number 1, we use substitution. I solved for x in the second equation because that was the one that had the leading coefficient of 1. In number 2, I used elimination. We multiplied the top equation by 3 so that we could cancel out the y's. And in number three, we had to multiply both equations by something. Uh, I wanted to get the x variables to 12 and negative 12, so I had to multiply the top one by 4 and the bottom one by 3. Right, in example three, we're going to look at standardized test practice problem. It says at a pizza restaurant, it costs four dollars to make a small pizza that sells for 12 bucks. And it costs six dollars to make a large pizza that sells for $15. In one week, a restaurant spent a total of $1,100 making pizzas and sold all of them for $2,910. How many small pizzas were sold? So what we need to do first is come up with our two equations. Well, it says that it takes $4 to make a small pizza. Let's call that S. And it costs 
to make a large pizza. In one week, the restaurant spent a total of $1,100. So this is the equation that we're going to have for how much it, it cost us, Okay, our expenses. We're also going to have an equation for how much money we made. So it says we make $12 on our small pizzas, and we make $15 on our large pizzas, and we made a total of $2,910. So here are the two equations. Now, in this equation, or in this problem, I'm definitely going to want to use elimination. Because if I look at this, I can see I want to multiply this one by negative 3. Because then my s's will cancel out. So that's going to give us negative 12s minus 18l equals negative 3,300. All right, if we add those up, now our S's disappear. We have negative 3L equals, we get 2910 minus 3300, we get 390, negative 390, which means L is 130. So we solve for L. Now the question asks us how many small pizzas were sold. Well, what does L represent? The amount of large pizzas. So our answer is not B because this is L that we're talking about. So what we have to do is plug that back in. And I'd plug it into the top equation because that's the one that's smaller numbers. So we're going to say 4S plus 6 times uh, L we said was 130 equals 1,100. So now we just have to solve for s. So 6 times 130 is 780. Now we subtract that from 1,100. So we're going to get 320. We divide that by 4. And S is 80. So we had 80 small pizzas were sold. All right. In example three, suppose the total cost to make the pizzas were 1640, and they sold for 4,290. Then how many small pizzas were sold? So we're going to use that same equation. You're just going to switch. These two numbers. All right, so go ahead, pause the video, and you can hit play when you're ready to, to move on. So here's the answer to guided practice question four. We'd set it up the same, we'd have 95 small pizzas were sold. All right, so like we talked about at the very beginning of the lesson, we want to see when is it best to choose what option. So we're going to be looking at those and trying to figure out what method we're going to use. So let's look at example four. We want to figure out what do we want to use to solve this? Elimination or substitution? Well, in this case, I look at the problem. I don't have any variables that are solved for by themselves. And I don't have any variables that have leading coefficients of one. So I'm going to use elimination. Now, I like elimination, so I'm going to use elimination on almost all of the problems and let it set, unless it's set up for a substitution. So I my goal is to take these x's. I know I can make them opposites real easy. I want one to be 6 and one to be negative 6. Well, the bottom one's already 6. I can get the top one to be negative 6 by multiplying the equation by negative 3. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to get negative 6x plus 9y equals negative 12. And I'm going to just rewrite the other one down. 6x minus 9y equals 8. So we add them up. X's cancel out. Y's cancel out. And we get 0 equals negative 4. 
Well, if both my variables disappear, this is just like solving a normal equation. Does 0 equal negative 4? Absolutely not. There is no solution to this problem. Okay, both my variables disappear. If we would graph these two lines, that would mean they are parallel. Okay, let's look at B. At B, again, I want to get some of the variables to be the same. Well, if I see this, I know that I can multiply the top one by 6, and they would be opposites. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply the top equation by 6. So it's going to be 6x minus 6y equals 24. And then I'm just going to rewrite this one, negative 6x plus 6y equals negative 24. Add them up. Well, gone, gone, and gone. It's 0 equals 0. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means infinitely many solutions. So, really... These are the same line. They're the same line. They're on top of each other. So using elimination and substitution, um, you can do those with substitution as well. But like I said, I like elimination. I can see real quick that I can add or multiply one of those by a coefficient and then add them up to cancel them out. So when you get a no solution or an infinitely many solutions and you're solving a system of equations, they should take care of themselves very, very quickly. So here are some guided practice questions on solving linear systems. Um, go ahead and do a couple of those. I will do all of them and you can check your answers to whichever ones you want. But go ahead and pause the video and you can play when you're ready to move on. And here are the answers to your guided practice questions. The first three went pretty quick. Uh, number five, notice I used substitution. And then the rest of the problems, we used elimination on those. So if we look back at section 3.2 it's a it's on solving system algebraically so our goal is to do the same thing we did in section 3.1 we want to find out what the ordered pair is that is a solution if there is one so we used elimination which means we have to get um, eliminate one of the variables and then solve it or we used substitution where we solve one of the variables for one of the equations and then we find out what the ordered pair is there. So here is your assignment for section 3.2. And I would highly recommend doing the quiz problems on page 167. Your first quiz for this chapter will be on sections 3.1 and 3.2. So it will be very similar to those problems.